exemption for electricity sold for industrial manufacturing purposes. Would you sign a similar bill of pass during your administration? Uh, are you asking me would I reverse the, the, the reversal of the tax exemption? <laughs> Okay. I I would not have and did not support any of the reversal of the tax exemptions, the tw the dirty dozen, so to speak. And uh, I actually went down and sat in one of those hearings and saw the arrogance of the leadership uh, that were determined to uh, to reverse those exemptions. It was wrong. It shouldn't have happened. And we will do our best to reverse those again when I get in office. Okay, I'm a tax hawk, and in spirit, I would like to see all of them be successful. But the reality is, uh, we would be crippled if all three passed at the same time. So uh, I oppose the majority of the three. What I do support is the reversal of the property tax mill levy freeze, which was a portion of, I think, 61. When Governor Ritter froze the property tax mill levy rate, which sounded great, it sounds like, oh, it's freezing our property taxes, that's a great idea, it was the opposite. And uh, it was unconstitutional. The appellate court said it was unconstitutional. But you know, Governor Ritter mugged you this year. He mugged you in the alley next to the state capitol. And on one end of the alley were two liberal Supreme Court justices, and on the other end of the alley were two more. And they said, go ahead and do it, Governor. We're watching your back. And the property tax mill every freeze was wrong, and it needs to be undone as well. Well, thank you for making that differential because I was unaware that there was a difference between the two. Uh, first of all, uh, we are out of balance with renewable energy right now. It was an admirable goal of Governor Ritter to try to set the pace with renewable energy, but he slapped traditional energy in the face as he did it. And I would not uh, increase any of those uh, in the interest of more renewables. I think we've got a, an onerous burden on ourselves now to meet those. And I, so I think my answer is no, no matter which one it was. But thank you for telling me that there were two different ones. Morning, Mr. Mays. I'm Paul Erickson from Sangre Crystal Electric in Buena Vista. Hi, Paul. Hi. When are you guys going to start calling it Buena Vista? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm the only one who does that. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> in, in the early 80s, electric co ops were given the ability to opt out of rate regulation by the PUC. And this was because the legislature believed locally elected boards were better able to regulate uh, electric co-ops and, and uh, protect the co-op members. Would you support the continued exemption from the PUC oversight for electric co-ops? Well, you guys have good questions. Um, what would you like me to do? <laughs> support? <laughs> well, it sounds to me that, that it's been working for you for quite a while and that it's good for you. I want to see government regulated as close to home as possible. So as the farther we can push government down to local, regional, and county levels, or, or, or utility districts and water districts, the better off it is to me. So I think my answer to that would be yes. Anyone else? If not, I've got a question, Mr. Mays. Uh, I think you've got some softball so far. So you mentioned 
you okay. just want to downsize state government. Can you help right. us out here? Tell us specifically how you would intend to downsize state government if you were elected. Yeah, I think my time's up, isn't it? <laughs> uh, well, specifically, uh, Governor Ritter, and, and Governor Ritter will deny this, he added 4,000 state employees to the payroll over the last four years. Now, approximately half of those went into higher education. But 15 to 1,700 of them were hired during a hiring freeze. Now, uh, Paul, what does a hiring freeze mean? You don't hire. But we added 15 to 1,700 people. So uh, as, as you know, insensitive as this may sound, we have to reverse that. And while, while the private sector was shrinking and contracting and cutting, government was adding. Same thing as in Washington. So we start by headcount reductions within the executive branch of government. Then we look at specific departments within that. Now, I'm not publicly stating I'm going to get rid of these departments, but I am saying that I'm going to start looking closely at the governor's energy office. What purpose does it serve? I'm going to look at Department of Local Affairs and say, is this an essential department? We have to know what is essential and what is important and what is necessary. And if it's not core to transportation infrastructure, public safety, and education, then I'm going to evaluate the significance of it. Thank you all very much. Have a great day, and God bless you.